7 o'clock on your Wednesday night, and this is a live look at Myrtle Beach tonight. At least I think we're going to look at it live. There we go. As Hurricane Dorian continues its march toward the South Carolina coast. Right now, the center of the storm is roughly 175, 180 miles south of Myrtle Beach. And we're getting some new numbers in right now as we watch the track of this storm. As you can see, we're being joined by our chief meteorologist, Efren Afonte. He's got the details on where the storm is tonight, what it's doing out there in the Atlantic, and how it's going to impact us. It's a Category 2 hurricane, 110 mile an hour winds, but it is quite large. Yeah. And all indications, it may not be strengthened as much, but it still has a well-defined eye right now. Here's the latest information as we just saw. It is currently 140 miles straight south of Charleston. Winds still at 110, moving to the north northwest at eight miles an hour. That's a concern because we really wanted it to speed up a little bit more. Now the winds are gusting at about 130 miles an hour, but the big thing is that it still hasn't moved from its location other than just 10 miles. Here's the current track from the National Hurricane Center. By early tomorrow morning, about two o'clock, it should be positioned about maybe 150 miles off the coast of Hilton Head Island. By tomorrow afternoon, though, it's going to be positioned as a Category 2, anywhere between 50 to 75 miles off the coast of Charleston until it continues heading towards North Carolina and eventually from Friday morning to Friday afternoon, continue towards the Outer Banks as possibly a Category 2 hurricane. The spaghetti models that will be updated in one hour will really tell a bigger story, but the big story right now about the spaghetti models not only are they indicating a later turn to the northeast, but now it's also indicating a lot closer to the South Carolina coastline. There's no indication yet of whether it'll make landfall, but no doubt the closer it's going to be, landfall or not, there's going to be still a big impact. And as we take a look, it is now well-defined and continues to spin. In the Atlantic, the eye is not very organized, but it's an eye. With the Category 2 hurricane, that's the reason why we have tropical storm warnings still in effect, as well as hurricane warnings for the e southeastern half of the Palmetto State. Now, the rain is already starting to move in in many areas of the low country. It's light to moderate. None of that really has gotten into the Midlands as of yet. We do continue a flash flood watch for the, pretty much the eastern uh, of southeastern half of South Carolina from the eastern and southern Midlands to the PD and the entire coastline as that will go throughout the day. Now there's the highest probability of heavy rainfall will be from Charleston County all the way up to Horry County and points inland. So eastern low country, all of the Grand Strand, the eastern PD, but there's still a moderate risk for heavy rainfall in the outer bands and then a slight risk when we go into the southern and eastern Midlands. This is what one computer model is indicating, and I want you to be very close attention to this. It is showing hardly any rainfall at all for about 98% of the Midlands. Maybe a little bit of rain into eastern Lee, Sumter, and Clarendon County. The bulk of the heavy rainfall is expected on Myrtle Beach from in-house model. If the track gets a little bit closer, move all that further to the west. As far as our model indicator, well, we expect the rain to start moving in sometime tomorrow morning or continue in the low country for the, as far as the Midlands, shortly after the morning starts along I-95. This continues it in the eastern Midlands, but it'll still continue through Thursday night until it's finally out of here by sometime around midnight. Now, as far as the probability of the winds, it's pretty much a guarantee that the entire coastal and coastal inland will have tropical storm force winds. And keep in mind, that's sustained 40 mile an hour winds going on the entire day. Well, the timing we're looking right right now as we go throughout the evening and then into tomorrow, we're looking at a time of about 8 o'clock in the morning where we could see hurricane force winds along the low country and then into tomorrow afternoon. Those hurricane force winds are now pushing more towards Myrtle Beach, but we're still going to be dealing with the tropical winds to the west of that. The take home message right now, JR, is that as this thing continues to move with the storm, storm surge that we're expecting, it's not going to be as bad so much in the low country. But as you get towards Charleston and head towards the Grand Strand, they could still be looking at six to nine foot storm surges as Dorian starts to move up the Atlantic. I don't know if you can bring back the graphic showing the eye right off the coast of South Carolina. Right now, it is scheduled to make that turn, as you mentioned, uh, later this evening, uh, turn no toward the northeast. What happens per se, uh, and I think I know the answer, but for our viewers at home, if that eye is delayed in turning toward the northeast, does that mean a lot more rain for parts of our coverage area? Well, keep in mind that 
as slow as it's moving right now and in its position. The way the track shows is that the spaghetti models are indicating that it may turn later as opposed to later on tonight, maybe right. turn tomorrow. Even if it slowly turns later or it slows down, the impact may not necessarily be a landfall, but you're talking about the amount of rainfall that is expected to just stay on the coast mm -hmm. is now gonna be further inland. The winds that were tropical that were expected just in the south and eastern Midlands may progress into the central Midlands. Right. So right. a lot of uncertainty. We'll keep watching it throughout the evening. You'll have another update coming up shortly for us. Appreciate okay. it. Now we do.